and thank you for joining us for another episode of Fort Worth Roots. Oh, was that your you backyard? That? <laughs> I was, oh my goodness, I was in a secluded area. I won't say where it is oh, because okay. I don't think Don't want to give it away? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to go to, to jail. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> We share more information about our sponsors and events that we have coming up at the very end of the episode. Also, at the end of today's episode, I'll do a complete mission debriefing from this weekend with all the activities that we had going on. This podcast is sponsored by Roofing Solutions by Darren Houck. You can go to roofingsolutionshauck.com or you can call him at 817-882-6520. And stay tuned to the very end. We have a winner from a drawing that we put together with Bay Point Designs out at the River Oak Spring Fest Car Show. We'll announce that winner at the very end. Today's guest is an excellent Fort Worth musician. We're extremely happy to have her on the show. You can find her on Instagram as her name. Please give it up for our new friend, Cassandra May Lawrence. And let's start the show. Usually I just walk in and hit record, but I had to put the banner up. And Who are you recording? Uh, so whenever I do event coverage, I'll just uh, maybe scoop up the vendors or the mm-hmm. artists coming off stage. Last night, so many people that I know showed up that we just did recordings with all my old friends. So oh, Dustin nice. Snyder from the Jerry Jonestown Massacre was there. Mm-hmm. The guys from Mean Motor Scooter sat down with me and did a little recording. And then uh, one of our sponsors was there. He recorded with us, so... But it's always fun to do that. It's just kind of engaging the community and talking about Fort Worth Roots, which I have no problem with. So Absolutely. <laughs> you need to talk about it so people know about it. So how did your evening go? What did you do? Last night? Yeah. What did I do last night? I believe I just relaxed and went and got some cashews from the store okay it's really eventful right <laughs> and then went back home and just kind of rested and practiced a little bit on the piano yeah and yeah that was really it i gazed at the moon for a period of time and walked around barefoot and that was my evening i just kind of oh. i was feeling called to just be in solitude so i embraced that i didn't yeah. feel like socializing and oftentimes you know i'll have events or something that I could go to, Mm -hmm. but if my body and my nervous system and my equilibrium is needing solitude and time by myself so that I can give more to others after having that downtime, I definitely take it and I don't feel bad about it. Yeah. Well, that seems really smart. I'm digging all this introspective stuff that I'm hearing from people lately. Um, I think there's a lot to that. And I think that after covid and uh, you know the whole 2020 shutdown like a lot of people are taking looks into their own mental well health or mental well-being and Mm -hmm. mental health and trying to see what they can do to kind of keep themselves in line so right it's good to hear more of that it's important (laughs) it's one of the main things that we need to focus on because it creates alignment with your body and your soul and if your mind isn't up to par then the other things aren't up to par so it's all encompassing you know it's all correlated and needed so you need to stay in balance which is really difficult to do (laughs) and we're often trying our best to just you know walk on that tight rope and try not to fall over in one direction right right so i think that's that's one of my main goals is getting balanced mind body and soul just being a little more present and Absolutely. So uh, this has kind of been happening a little bit lately. I've, since the beginning of the podcast, I've always told people, like, you can send me questions and subjects and things that we can cover, and nobody has done it for so long. And then uh, the last recording was with the Fort Worth Fire Department, and I feel like that guy didn't really have a choice. Like, he needed to know what we were going to talk about so that he didn't say something that was going to, like, disgrace the city or something like that you know so we kept it on format but then uh cassandra was nice enough to provide me with questions too so we're gonna go through your list today okay (laughs) and make sure to intuitively ask whatever questions oh yeah for sure for you i just wrote those down just you know yeah we'll definitely get 
through these and generally what happens is we'll start on a subject and then we'll chase every rabbit trail uh through the entire process so Mm. all right so when did you start singing I started singing whenever I was six years old and my parents had a piano in the house that I would just play you know single notes and have fun and I would make up songs as well (laughs) they weren't very intricate obviously but I started then, but I didn't have any piano lessons or anything like that. I would just play by ear. Not classically trained. Right, (laughs) right. And uh, then I started singing more, I don't know if you could say professionally, but with a lot more passion whenever I entered the Texas Girls Choir here in Fort Worth. Now, were you always from Fort Worth? No, I was actually born in Massachusetts, oh, okay. in Malden, Massachusetts. So that's where my extended family lives as well. Okay. I have a very large family. And when did y'all make your way down to Fort Worth? Um, we made our you? way, I believe I was around one or two. Okay. I was pretty young. I was still a, a baby and yeah. my two siblings, my parents and I, all came down in our wagoneer <laughs> that we had and moved down into, I believe it was River Oaks. I'm not sure. Maybe Fort Worth, technically, yeah. off of White Oak Lane. Okay. And uh, we came down here because my uh, grandfather was telling my parents that it was a better area to raise children yeah. and lower cost of living, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So we just moved down here without any family but him. Wow. That's a tough move, right? You got your whole family up there, and then you just kind of mm-hmm. break for Fort Worth. Right. But yeah. I, I've got to agree with your granddad. I think it's a great community, and it's only getting better. I agree. All right, let's go for question number two. What is your favorite jazz song to sing? Okay. <laughs> so I first thought the song At Last by Etta James. However, I did a bit of research on that and realized that it was technically r&b pop okay which i wasn't quite aware of Uh until the other day when someone actually asked me this question um a gentleman that i just got acquainted with asked me this whenever i posted on instagram hey Mm. if anyone has any questions for the upcoming interview let me know and he said you know what's your favorite jazz song so i started thinking about it and so if we're talking about jazz i would say fever by Peggy Lee. Okay. And that's one of my favorites to sing. I'll have to look that up because I'm, I'm so, it's so weird because I, I interview so many musicians, you would think I would know more about music and music history, but I don't. So You don't need to. <laughs> I, I feel a little bit unprepared sometimes when people start name dropping, like classic artists. Well, I feel like your purpose is to continuously carry on great conversations so you're doing your part perfect you're yeah and i'm definitely learning every interview i i do especially with musicians i learn a little bit more about music history so <laughs> um jet the jazz scene here in fort worth we've got at least two uh excellent jazz venues that i've been to one i have not been to the other one yet and i'm now i'm trying to search my brain for the name of it but uh is it scat jazz lounge <sighs> there's one over there by sundance square and I think that's, that's the one you're the talking one. about. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the one I've been to. And then there's another one, I think, that's off of Camp Bowie. But I have not been there yet. Mm-hmm. But there is a jazz scene here in Fort Worth. And if you know about it, you know about it. But it's not really talked about that much. Mm. It doesn't seem like it's kind of, in, in my opinion, it's not in the Fort Worth limelight. Mm. It's not getting the attention it deserves, I don't think. I agree. I remember in the past, back in 2018, I went to uh, Scat Jazz Lounge, and mm-hmm. I had an impromptu session with the band that was playing. I you told to them during them? the break, yeah, I told That's them awesome. during the break that I was a singer, and that during <laughs> that time, you up there? yeah, during <laughs> that time, I suspected that I was going to mainly focus on jazz because I always considered myself more of a torch singer mm-hmm. kind of vibe. Torch singer, which is like at a James. Peggy Lee, all of the classic jazz singers, they okay. have this sound about them. Okay. And that's what torch singer means, the well, the sound of your voice. I hope this, I, I always feel like this is going to come off as an insult because I don't know if you like this person or if you appreciate their style of music. Just say it. 
But yeah, so when I was listening to your music and getting ready for the interview, I was like, she kind of has like a Florence and the Machines type fill. Oh, I feel like, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I do like Florence yeah. and the Machine. I adore her. Someone else said that to me recently too when really? I was referencing my song, Boy, I'll Make You Feel Like a Man. That, that's the one I was listening to. Okay, yeah. okay. So. Interesting. I can't really hear it, but uh-huh. I like it whenever I get feedback from other people about what they perceive the song to be. Yeah, it was that song and then sounds. one right after it. And like the two of them combined, I was, that's what kind of led me to that. But um, yeah, limited music knowledge. So that's coming from somebody that has a limited music knowledge. Well, it doesn't sound like it if you could hear that. <laughs> it seems to be something that other people can hear as well. That's one of my favorite female artists, though, Florence. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, she's incredible. Yeah, she is. Uh, when did you start playing piano? We already did that one, didn't we? No. Okay. I yeah, we we talked about when you were when you started singing th- that we um, had a piano mm-hmm. at the house um, growing up. But I started playing piano in 2019. Okay. So I took. You're excellent on keys. Thank you. I took a few lessons, so it was like, okay, yeah, a few months of lessons, which was. One lesson every week, so a total of 12 lessons at a place called Septian Entertainment Group in Mm -hmm. Carrollton. And I heard that they were the best teachers over there, so I took some lessons from Ben Fisher Fisher so that I could compose my songs Mm -hmm. by myself. Well, as good as you are, I just assumed you'd been playing your entire life, so... Maybe I've been playing in other lifetimes. Could be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What was your first instrument? Uh, my first instrument were percussion instruments, the okay. drums. Yeah. So I guess technically my first instrument was the drum. And Your parents love that? Yeah, they put my drum set in the back house. We had this back <laughs> pool shed like set up, and it was a two-story well, cool. shed that my father some of my siblings and i had built together and it was a really good time constructing it um however i didn't know that i was going to have a little setup back there and Mm -hmm. be secluded but my sisters all played wind wind instruments so my drum set had to go and eventually it got stolen what out yeah, of that room? Out not of that? the entire thing, but I think it was like the the bass and the hi hat and the snare and something else. Who does this? I don't know. Miscreants <laughs> in Fort Worth, apparently. And uh, it was it was a really interesting time. However, I just look back at it like, okay, well, if I'm I'm glad that it was stolen because then it allowed me to focus on some other things. What what did you move into after the drums? Well. I was playing the piano more because we yeah. still had a piano at the house, but I would only play by ear. I didn't really know what I was doing, right. so I'd hear a song and then just kind of intuitively yeah. play it, play the notes and my my hand posture and whatever else was totally right. off, but yeah. I was just doing what I felt. Playing so. around. Yeah. I uh, I can play Heart and Soul mm-hmm. and uh, is it Chopsticks? Yeah. I can play those too. That's it. <laughs> Do you use your fists for chopsticks or something? I think you can. That, yeah, because yeah. you, you can roll across the black keys <laughs> and then pound on the white ones. And mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen people do that. No, I'm much more articulate. I use my fingers. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> when and where was your first solo artist gig? Now, did all these questions come from your, your community? No. Okay. I actually threw them together this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're great. All right. So when, <laughs> when and where was your first solo artist gig? Okay, so I had up and left Fort Worth, Texas, and moved to Atlanta in October of 2019. Oh, wow. And that was whenever I left my former business that I had here for six years called Solanamoy DFW. Okay. And And what what, what did your business cater to? I was a hairstylist and makeup artist. Okay. I catered to balayage, like hair painting, hair, hair contouring. Okay. Which is coloring the hair and... Uh, yeah. weddings and updos and makeup and things like that. So just shut it down and move to yeah. Atlanta. I felt prompted to. I had uh, this somewhat of an ascension and realized that I needed to do music full time. So I ended up moving to Atlanta and had the opportunity to focus on my music and so I composed all my songs. Well, Why? not all of them. I think I composed like three songs. You had a question. Why Atlanta? 
because at the time I was dating somebody oh, okay. that lived there already. So I yeah. was already like frequenting mm. Atlanta while coming back and running my business for just a week out of the month right. and then living in both places. And I know. I worry was, out. Jesus. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I did eventually. But initially I thought it was exciting and I really enjoyed only needing to work like a, a week out of the month. Right. and. Um, then I felt the need for more structure and stability and I wanted to get grounded in creating a band or mm. something like that. But truly I just needed to work on myself and work on my music. So because I had taken piano lessons, I now had a little bit of downtime once I moved to Atlanta so that I can compose my songs and I composed three of them in like three months mm. or so three or four months and then i had my first gig with so far sounds in atlanta in march 4th what kind of venue is this i believe so the particular venue was inside of a large warehouse okay. however so far sounds is a company that has venues that they are able to just lease that evening okay yeah. so it's nice because it's very broad it's not only in america but they have you know places in germany or australia or pretty much all around the world different okay. cities different major cities all around the world do we have one here yeah we okay. do yeah i actually did one in october and then i did another one in december recently and the most recent one in december was at salon atlas in okay. fort worth which someone I used to work with as a hairstylist <laughs> uh, owns that salon. It was a nice little synchronicity. And where's that at? That's over in Southside. Okay. Huh. Near Magnolia yeah. and whatnot. Um, so we were I off rail you there. You said March 4th you had your first gig. Right, and then and three days later. 2019 or 2020? 2020. Oh, shit. So okay. 2020. <laughs> And, you know, I had been gaining a bit of momentum in that and composing my songs, et cetera. And then four days later, the pandemic hit. So it's awful. it yeah. was quite an interesting ride. I've um, heard a lot of people, well, I don't know, several people tell me stories of how they were either building a business, building a brand, something. Mm -hmm. And then it was, yeah, off railed by COVID. So, yeah. And... I don't know. It it felt more like it was divinely orchestrated for me because then I got to take more time singing and playing piano at the same time. Right. And really focus on that because prior to that, my first gig that I had, I had someone else play the piano for me and play my songs for me. Yeah. Because I didn't feel proficient enough to yeah. do that. And it so was super awkward. Yeah. So then now I had the free time. So I really doubled down and did that and that's what kept me going through the pandemic is my passion and realizing that it wouldn't always be that way yeah so when did fort worth get you back <laughs> fort worth took me back i came down here in may i believe 2021 and I kept having the feeling that I needed to come back to Fort Worth. Yeah. And it wasn't just that. I was also getting visions in my dreams and other little synchronicities that seemed to pull me back. Um, so there were a lot of reasons that I just felt called to come back. So my intuition was telling me to do that. So I did it. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm glad we got you back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to be here. How long have you been an entrepreneur? Was that your first uh, business as a, a makeup artist? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was, so I first started Salon Amore September 28th, 2013. Oh, wow. So I've been an entrepreneur for 10 years now. And you're just done with that? Well, I still do my friend's hair. I still do my friend Summer's yeah. hair and I still enjoy coloring hair and I just cut another friend's hair recently and it's always going to be something that's a part of me. Yeah. So at first I thought, I just can't do this anymore. It's not my purpose any longer. And 
I feel spiritually called to move in this direction and I must serve yeah. humanity in this way. And so I just kind of dropped it and thought that if I still did it, I'd be out of integrity with my, within myself, yeah. which is quite interesting. Um, but that's, that's how I was feeling. And now I just think I need to just take it easy <laughs> and just play and have fun and not take it too seriously. So we're good. Yeah. I'll let you have a drink of your coffee. I keep interrupting you. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so this is a good question because I'm always interested to hear artists talk about this. How do you write your songs? What's your process? <laughs> <laughs> so it varies so much. I sometimes just have poetry that I'll write and then I'll decide, hmm, this kind of sounds like a song and then I'll turn it into a song. And then other times I'll just hear a melody in my mind come through and then I'll, you know, compose it on the piano and then add words to it. And then other times it's like the whole song just kind of comes through. And as it's coming through, I call it getting a download or channeling. And so I'll just start playing it and the words will come out and I'll write it down and write down the chords that come through and everything. Um, so it, it varies. All of my songs were written differently. Mm -hmm. I can't say that I just sit down and just force myself to write because I just write whenever I feel prompted to. It's interesting to hear you give that perspective too, because it seems like there's, there's probably several camps, but there's two that I'd pay attention to or have noticed songwriters that have kind of more of a technical approach to it and then mm -hmm. you hear a lot of and this is what's fascinating to me a lot of musicians a lot of artists credit kind of like the universe or like a <laughs> a creative uh, pool of energy that's always got stuff in it and whenever it's ready to be released it'll travel through whatever avenue it needs to to get out into the our, our plane of existence or mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if I'm butchering that or yeah. not, but artists talking about themselves being kind of a receiver to, mm -hmm. to put out something that's already there. And so mm -hmm. they, they kind of remove themselves from it. They don't want to take credit for it. They just kind of say it was supposed to be there. Right. That's kind of what that sounded like. And that's exactly how I perceive it to be. Yeah. And I'm a conduit. And okay. so it's like a conductor, right? So mm -hmm. there are many little antennas. We're all just antennas, right? Antennas, and that's so what that, I hear, yeah. That energy just comes through, and then if you're able to interpret it, then, you know, you had been selected, but it's also part of your job to follow through with getting it out there because if you don't get it out there, it will select somebody else Yeah. because that's the main objective is to get it out to the masses so that everyone can enjoy it. It's not just about you. I'm trying to remember who I was listening to just recently, but I mean, you, it sounds like you just quoted them. That's exactly what they Interesting. were saying. Interesting. Yeah. Because they were saying like, you, you got to be the one that's ready to uh, get it out because if you don't, it will go to somebody else. Wow. I just thought that was such a, a very fringe idea pattern, just a thought process. I'd Never would have thought of, I don't know. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, if you if you consider how energy works, it all makes sense. Like current? Yeah. Yeah, yeah because we're all made of energy. Everything that we're constantly witnessing in this environment is made up of energy. And it's only tangible because it's speeding at such a rapid rate. And that's why things actually have structure to them. Otherwise, they wouldn't. I could nerd out for a while on just <laughs> physics stuff like um, it, Neil deGrasse and you know all these people him. that I follow on like TikTok mm -hmm. and Instagram their videos are constantly popping up talking about energy and matter and the universe and things like that and I dig that stuff. I could talk about that <laughs> this whole interview. Yeah. Yeah. What's your most fascinating tidbit that you can share with our listeners about that kind of stuff? Mm. I left it I left it very vague. <laughs> Fake questions are great. So I would say something that I've noticed for myself is that because everything is energy, you want to surround yourself with the correct energies. And we're constantly picking up on other people's energies 
even if we don't feel it or realize it. And so it's also good for you to ensure that you're in the correct environment sure. and not just hanging out with anybody and ensuring yeah. that you're protected in that way, but not being paranoid, but precautious. Yeah. And there are many things that you can do to create an energy connection where you can pick up on someone else's energy, like kissing or making love and those things, you know, seem to be even more energetically tying. So don't just be making out with anybody, or <laughs> making love to anybody. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I think that's solid advice. Um, uh, yeah. So I want to say within the last year to eight months or something like that, I just, I've really taken an active role towards trying to make sure that I'm investing my energy in the right places and with the right people mm. because I've gotten into it in the, my entire past just devoting too much energy and attention and time to people that don't really value it mm -hmm. so now I try to make sure that I'm around people that put off the right you know um, the right vibe I use that word a lot like people that are kind of on the same page as me mm -hmm. but also that value my time so but I, I try to be cautious with that, too, because I don't want to have my nose turned up and evaluating everybody all the time, making sure that they're checking all my boxes. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get that. And, and you're right when you say vibration, because we all are operating on different vibrations. Yeah. And that's a bit of what I was encompassing on earlier when yeah. I was talking about energy. So I don't think, I mean, I feel like that would be correct for you to do is to be a bit more selective about who you hang out with. Yeah. And that doesn't, I mean, I feel like society shames us for yeah. things that they shouldn't. It's just good adulting too. Yeah. Right? Taking I mean. care of yourself <laughs> and putting yourself first so that you can better take care of other people. And 100%. It's okay. Yeah. I saw your video um, this morning. I was looking for some of your music and I went through your YouTube and there, I guess like three or four days ago, mm -hmm. you were doing it like, I don't, were you at a park or oh, was that you your backyard? That? <laughs> I was, oh my goodness. I was in a secluded area. I won't say where it is oh, because okay. I don't think. Don't want to give it away? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to go to to jail. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but you got to tell me off recording then. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will mention it. It's a uh, secluded forest that I'm living by right now. And um, I was taking a nap in the dirt. And uh, Did you I get just, ant bites? No. That's my primary fear. I don't think bites. so. I'm not I really feel scared like of spiders. If I lay down without any fear, I'll be less likely to get any. Hmm. Interesting. And so that was the frequency that I was putting out. <laughs> no ant bite vibes. <laughs> yeah. I have nothing but love for you. <laughs> <laughs> don't bite me. You're my friends. Um, <laughs> so I had been barefoot hiking which is one of my favorite things to do because then i can connect to the frequency of gaia our planet and be more attuned and balanced in myself and also it decreases cortisol in your brain and also emits more uh, serotonin in your brain so your hormones are more balanced all of these things happen for you whenever you just stand in the grass or stand in the ground mm. so that's another main reason why I do it. I'll have um, to give that a shot. It's I'm always wearing shoes. It's called shoes. grounding or yeah. earthing. I've heard those terms, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're not naturally made to wear these foot prisons <laughs> on our feet. <laughs> I, uh, um, I've, I've heard people talk about the, uh, the effects of wearing shoes, um, how it kind of cripples us because it's like wearing a cast. Like our foot is supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to be flexible. You know, you're supposed to walk in a way that shoes inhibit. Mm -hmm. So after a while... Walking without shoes is it's painful, right? Mm -hmm. Not just like the sensation of your bare foot touching hard ground, but trying to move your foot in the way the foot is supposed to operate, right? Mm -hmm. So I think there's something to that for sure. Just getting your foot out of a shoe once in a while is probably a good idea. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I was doing that and then I was laying down in a, in a meditation and just doing some breath work. And then I felt called to record myself saying the things that were coming through, which I had already determined for myself, but I felt called to actually record it. So okay. 
And that's what I was talking about when I was laying there on the dirt <laughs> in the forest. How often <laughs> how often do these uh illegal forest trips occur? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh <laughs> I don't want you to tell us anything incriminating. I'm okay. Just curious. Well we'll just say a lot more frequently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. Uh all right. Okay, so we covered both of those. Uh, what was the first song you wrote and how did it come to you? Oh my goodness. Yeah. So that has to do with the Ascension that I was referencing earlier when I was saying that I didn't want to do, yeah, when I didn't want to do hair anymore and I felt called to serve in a different way. And I was living alone for about six years in an apartment by myself. Well, hence alone. Yeah. But during that time, it was wonderful. I got to know myself better and got to realize more of my abilities and things like that. Um, I was going through what you would call a dark night of the soul where it seemed like everything was just falling apart around me and it was so frightening and I felt very alone and I was in a bit of despair during that time also and I was questioning the relationship that I was in and wanting to break up with the person that I was with, et cetera. So it was just like everything just seemed not to not serve yeah, me anymore. Not a good time. Yeah. 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 It was not a fun time. So I, during that time I had gotten T-boned by a van Shit. in my Toyota Camry. I know. Well, at least you were in a Camry. It's a good car. Yeah, it truly was. <laughs> I felt like it was very safe. So, but getting T bones never a good idea. No, yeah. I, I feel like I was so mentally preoccupied while driving, and Shit. I had the stop sign, so it was my fault, mm. and I didn't even realize it. But I had the stop sign, and I went out into the intersection on University and like Sixth Street or Fifth Street, maybe. Okay, um, uh, right there by the call. What was that? The, oh. By the circle. Like yeah, the, uh, the big nasty, massive tra- awful. Big circle, yeah. <laughs> eight different roads coming yeah. to one or something. <laughs> yeah, right over in there in that vicinity off of university. Um, but anyway, so I had gotten T-boned and... How bad were you injured? I don't know. It was weird because I didn't have a scratch or anything oh, on wow. me. That's However, awesome. yeah, and I got out of it and I just had an adrenaline rush and I you know, was processing everything, but I also felt like I may have messed up my neck, but I didn't feel it that night. I felt it maybe a few months later or something. And now the left side of my neck hurts often. Mm. And I feel like I can't find enough alleviation for that. Have you had it checked out? Yoga and, uh, yeah, Yeah. I have. Nothing broken? No, I don't know. It's kind of, there's, there's a bit of, um, some kind of misplacement in there. I don't remember. You x-rayed though? I did have it x-rayed at the okay. chiropractor and yeah. they told me that they could just fix it while doing some chiropractor okay. work. So, yeah. yeah. So, okay. I was it's concerned okay. about your spine. Oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best to stay in alignment. Yeah, man. I've really been trying to fix my posture lately. I probably need better chairs for that, but I don't know. Like the older I get, the more I notice like my posture just sucks. So, <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> but it's something I've been very cognizant of lately. So I'm doing yoga like helps with stretches that. and stuff and I'll be driving down the road with like my head pressed into the headrest. <laughs> like if anybody sees this, they're gonna be like, what's wrong with that psycho? <laughs> I'm uh, just in this body right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> it do be like that sometimes. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so accident, had the accident, went home to my apartment by myself. Mm-hmm. And during that time, I was just thinking to myself, what? in the actual hell is even going on right now and sat on my bathroom counter and looked up into the mirror where my sister had written love light life in the left side of the mirror. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, all of a sudden, you know, I was, I was looking at that while also reaching out for something higher than myself. Yeah. I didn't quite have a lot of, spirituality in my life because i just believed in quantum physics and science and anything that you could prove etc right yeah and so i was reaching out for something higher than myself and then all of a sudden my song eyes in the dark started just coming through and so i started writing it down and 
I felt this connection to spirit and I felt this connection and knowing that there were other beings in my apartment with me. Hmm. And that was the first time I realized that I had spirit guides and it was pretty incredible. And I wrote most of the song. However, it took me, I guess, over an entire year or so to actually put it together. It was the first time I was experiencing that. And then over time, I got better and better at interpreting them. Now you're going to have to tell us about spirit guides. Okay. I feel like we've got a whole episode there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so does everybody have spirit guides? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. What is a spirit guide? So a spirit guide could be a passed on loved one. Okay. Or they could be someone that was assigned to you. Who's doing these assignments? I would say the... Source. So I call it source. I don't say like there's a, you know, a heaven or hell or whatever, because I feel like you create that for yourself Mm -hmm. on earth. I call him the engineer. The engineer. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The engineer or um, people or entities that are helping with the orchestration of this entire life. Yeah. But I would say source and going back to source and reviewing your entire life and taking the tidbits that you need to take into consideration to have a better realization of what you need to do next time or how you evolved on a soul level and how light your heart is, you know, how heavy your heart is or how light your heart is and what you could do to have more of a, an evolution of your soul. So in that instance, when you're going through your life review and you're talking about it with whom, whomever it may concern, you know, mm-hmm. whoever that is. <laughs> um, no names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then they say, okay, well, congratulations. You know, you went to earth school and you learned this and that, and now this is the next level. So now you need to be a spirit guide for so-and-so. And this is just in the highest good of all for you and everyone. And then that's kind of how it happens. So far as i know how far can we take this um okay. <laughs> do you have names Let's for your go. spirit guides i do actually okay. i know of three of them okay but i was told in a dream that i have eight of them so i know that one of my spirit guides who hangs out on my right side is actually my father okay so his name is dean and then on my left side is a woman named carly and I've seen her in one of my dreams. And it's, I know, it's totally a random name, but that's her name. And I met a Carly just she, recently, and I thought that was a really pretty name. Oh, that's I'm cool. I'm glad your spirit guide's name's Carly. It's yeah, nice. me too. Who's <laughs> <laughs> the third one? And then the third one is my puppo, my father's father. Okay. And he also hangs out on my right side. When did your father pass away? In 2013. Okay. January 11th, 2013. Right as you're starting your business? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, well, right. Yeah, exactly. That same year, right before I started my business. And that was also a very interesting time for me. Where I was just like, well, the only thing you're guaranteed in this life is that you're going to die. Yeah. And I might as well make all my dreams come true. What did you call it? Your dark something? Oh, dark night of the soul. Yeah, Yeah, I definitely went through that. Mm -hmm. And that was also really beneficial for me because then I started reaching out for something beyond myself and my dad had a big part in that because there were things that happened that were just unexplainable like you can only interpret those things that happened as him being involved in them yeah if that makes sense yeah I see what you're saying yeah yeah or I would Just smell his cologne. Far too randomly. coincidental. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't really believe in coincidences. Right. Yeah. But I. I but it's the <laughs> word that we use to explain how we're feeling. Right. For sure. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so you are now the Fort Worth Roots uh, spiritual liaison. Okay. Just so you know, <laughs> we'll be calling you uh, and asking questions uh, remotely <laughs> recording. So um, listeners can go ahead and leave your comments and we'll check back with Cassandra and she'll answer your questions. <laughs> All right, so what is something about you that we don't know? I feel like we've learned a lot. Mm. But there's, yeah, there's definitely more, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You, you don't have to give us just one answer to. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I would say something you don't know about me is that I'm what's considered a hypersensitive person. Okay. So I also interpret that as I have a clairsentience and clairaudience and claircognizance and... Sometimes that's another reason why I like to be alone mm -hmm. at times because I'm processing a lot of things or feeling a lot of things. But I realized those abilities in my childhood, but I was able to better hone those skills yeah. as an adult. Seems like you run into that a lot with artists. And I don't know that you know, chicken or the egg, which one came first, but it seems like artists do need to be kind of removed from stimulus every once mm -hmm. in a while, you know, to kind of recharge. And like last uh, evening I was supposed to record with bands as they were stepping off stage, but a lot of them didn't want to talk. Mm -hmm. They're up there in front of all these people. They give it everything they got. And then whenever they got off stage, they just want to go away, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. they're, you know, not afraid of being the subject of attention for the, 45 minutes that they're on stage but they don't like to really talk to people maybe and it's because like you said just being overstimulated and sensitive to the i guess conversation or yeah. whatever but that seems to be kind of typical of artists wouldn't you say i would i would say i've i've noticed that a lot as well yeah. and i also know what it feels like to have that feeling of depletion mm -hmm. and it is good to recharge to ensure that you can do it again and sometimes it's a lot I, I can get very overstimulated even in my own home you know if there are a lot of other things going on there yeah um but yeah so doing things like uh taking naps in the dirt and being friends <laughs> with the ants yes. and things like that really Being in nature yeah. definitely helps me recharge that and solitude and working out mm -hmm. and doing yoga and writing and music is a really good outlet for me as well. I'm finding stuff like that through almost like necessity. Um, I'm not typically somebody that would uh, seek out uh, resources to kind of calm myself down. But one day I just pulled over at the, the Trinity and just went for a walk. Just I'm getting out. I'm going to walk. And then I decided, well, I really like that. Mm -hmm. So I kept doing it. And then one day I was like, I just, I just want to write stuff on paper. So I started writing stuff on paper and then I, I really like that. So, you know, after a while I started coming up with these tools to kind of mitigate the stress. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you just kind of, you either have somebody tell you how to do it or nature will just take its course and you find these things through omission or, you know, just natural selection or something. I don't know. But yeah, like everything you just listed does help a lot. And then if like if if you don't know about these things, it seems like you're just gonna find them. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I guess the res the reverse of that is you don't find them and you just go nuts, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, it so, sounds like you were definitely pulled in that direction. Yeah, yeah. I get benefit. overstimulated too, but it it just, it has less to do with being out in public for me. It's like my own shit will kind of eat me up you know mm -hmm. the amount of work that i put on myself or the tax deadline or that bill that i know i should pay but i for whatever reason procrastinated too long and mm -hmm. now it's a problem things like that yeah just daily adulting uh, shit and way heavy on your mind <laughs> especially if you're yeah. over processing it and overthinking it yeah feeling it i'm going on a camping trip soon we decided where are you last going night. uh big ben and then I think we're going to make a stop through Terlingua. I'm bringing my passport with me. We're going to stop at, 
I cannot remember the name of the tiny little town in between those two, but there's a little bitty town and you can go there, you park and you can walk across to Mexico Mm -hmm. and you can have lunch, buy some things and then walk back. It's like super low key. And only I, it's not, I mean, I I don't hear any travel agents talking about it. There's no advertisements online, but apparently it's a pretty popular thing in that entire community small community Mm -hmm. thrives off of stuff like that so wow it's not terlingua is it it's before you get to terlingua because you can't walk from terlingua to mexico but the little town next to it you can okay is the way i understand i haven't been over there yet have you been to terlingua no okay unfortunately yeah so episode one we've been going for three years now and we've uh, like 135 episodes right Mm -hmm. but episode one we were talking about terlingua and i still have not been so maybe you, can you go down there oh yeah we're going yeah it's gonna be part vicinity? of the trip yeah okay so the the thing that's really fascinating to me about this trip is we're going to what's called uh a, a, a dark space area I'm, I'm saying that wrong but anyway like there's light pollution everywhere you go mm-hmm. even when you're in the middle of nowhere away from cities uh because of horizon light right mm-hmm. so this spot is it's recessed enough that it takes care of that horizon light. There are no cities around. So um, you can see the the glow of our galaxy with the naked eye. And yeah, same. That sounds wonderful. Yes, I know. So um, <laughs> every once in a while, I'll get just kind of outside of the city and I'll look up and I'm like, God, I miss this. Because I haven't always lived in Fort Worth mm-hmm. and um, I took a little trip to Iraq one time and it was like that. Like you could look up and it was just so beautiful. Wow. Dark sky, I think is what it is, but there's different categories. And I think we live in like a category four and I, I just made that up. But anyway, there's, there's numbers for it. And where we're going is a level zero. Oh my goodness. So it's as dark as you can possibly get in the world. There, there's other places like question, this, but yeah. Cause it's a, yeah wow so i'm looking forward to that oh my goodness but that's another big distressor for me so and do it, you get to sleep you get to sleep outside then mm-hmm. right okay. i've got this huge eight person tent that i'm gonna bring and it's got a mm-hmm. screened in like a uh, patio area too so oh sweet so you can you know and that's got the dirt floor right it's just screened in so bugs can't get into uh you know bite you and give you malaria blue and yellow or blue and orange i think it's got some orange in it but it's yeah i think it's like blue gray and orange something like that Uh, okay because i might you have the same tent tent. yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) so great and i think i when i found it at academy it was like a hundred bucks and the one right next to it was like a two-man tent Mm -hmm. for a hundred bucks and i'm like two-man tent eight-man tent come on, Andrew, you don't need that giant thing. And I'm like, yeah, but look, that's two man tent for a hundred bucks or this one for a hundred bucks. Okay. Get that one. Okay. Yeah. Makes so sense. then we did High va- <laughs> higher value. My yes. And my no me, we, we picked it up. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that hard to put together. Anyway, so where else did you live? You said that you haven't always lived in Texas. Well, yeah, I've mostly lived in Texas except for the okay. military. Military kind of drug me around a couple oh, places. Okay. But yeah, um, but we started in uh, Ira Ann, mm-hmm. and then we went to Midland, and then Abilene, and then I made it here. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. But I've been here for 14 years. So. Okay. But yeah, I've unfortunately lived in a few other places, thanks to Uncle Sam. Um, but yeah, I'm not leaving Fort Worth now. Good. <laughs> I do have that passport. I like going places, but yeah. this is home. Totally. Yeah. What other places have you been to that you could maybe live in or oh. live, call home? Oh, my goodness. Well, I especially like Atlanta. Okay. When, while I was living there, I felt very connected to the community. I haven't been there yet. It was wonderful. And I didn't get to see outside of Atlanta and mm-hmm. Georgia that much. I did a little bit. I went and stayed at a place called Farm of the Free out in, um, what is it, Anna? No, I don't remember. Anyway, that was out in the very rural part of Georgia, which was really nice. But Mm -hmm. I especially like the mountains out there in Georgia and see, I didn't even think of forests and everything. It's incredible. Since you like the outdoors, Mm -hmm. you probably love it because you only have to drive like forty-five minutes or so, and you can be climbing a mountain or 
going through a forest mm-hmm. or any of those things. And the spring is so incredible. I just, Georgia. when I think of Georgia, for whatever reason, I just don't think of mountains. So uh, that's good to know. I didn't, I had no idea. They're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get away from them. <laughs> Uh, my one of my big ones is Seattle. I love Seattle, but I, I couldn't call it home. I know the I lack couldn't. Of sun. Well, you know, so this is the weird thing. So my brother lived there for uh, like a decade or more, mm-hmm. and uh, I would go up there to visit almost every year. And mm-hmm. every single time I would go there, it would just be sunshiny and perfect. And uh, I would I would always mention how much I love Seattle, and he's like, "You don't understand. It's not always like this." It's usually gloomy and rainy and it's just, but every time you come here, the sun's out and it's beautiful. So anyway, just don't get it mixed up. Like this is not what it's actually like. And I'm like, I don't know. Every time I come here, it's like this. So maybe you bring the sun with you. (laughs) I get enough of it in Texas. It just follows me. But um, I just love it up there and it is absolutely beautiful, but it's, you know, it's totally different than here. Mm. Everything about it. So, but I do love going. Um, yeah, if you go, let me know. I'll tell you some cool, like non-touristy stuff that you got to go check out. That's all that I would want to do. Yeah, that's I the best. I don't like the touristy things I like ever. doing both. I like, mm-hmm. so my first trip to a new place, I kind of want to do the touristy stuff, but mm-hmm. then I want to go back and do the non-touristy stuff. I see. Yeah. Cause I, I gotta have both. Yeah. <laughs> to figure out what you really like. The best way to do that too, is to take like a tour. If you mm-hmm. like almost every big city has like, was it, uh, the duck tour or whatever. They have those amphibious buses. Oh, you know yes. About? Okay. I do know what you're talking about. At first I didn't know, but and yes. I think some cities have lost them just cause you know, oh. tourism was down or whatever. And they had to close up shop or whatever, but there's even one in Austin. And hmm. so you can take a duck tour in Austin. You can take a duck, duck tour in uh, Galveston, mm-hmm. uh, definitely in Seattle. I mean, there's just, so anyway, and even if you can't find a duck tour, just take a tour. Mm-hmm. And then you've got insider local information on all the stuff. You're going to get some history too, which I like. That would be nice. Yeah. To get a feel for everything. Yeah. And then, Have you been to Sedona? Mm, no. Arizona? Mm-mm. It's incredible. I've been to Phoenix. Mm. And then what neighbors, uh, where does Las Vegas fall? In Nevada, like where at in is that, Nevada? Does that, how close is that to the Arizona border? Uh, I, I want to like say. On one of my Vegas trips, we went to Arizona too. Maybe four hours, but okay, I'm not so certain. So definitely not. I'm totally wrong about that. What? Well, if, if it's four hours from Arizona, I did not go to Arizona. What if I'm wrong? Let's look it up. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I feel like we were on the border. Like there's a little border town there and I feel like the casino is on one side of the river. Mm-hmm. And then Arizona is on the other side, but I, I'm probably mixing this up. We're about to find out. Yep. So what are you doing today? Well, today I'm going to probably just go back home after this and rest for a little while. And then I've got Siren Saturday's open mic tonight at that Hotel a, Revel. Okay. That's the place yeah. that you saw me singing. Yeah. And that was great. And I have recently listened, or since then, I have listened to you sing Angel uh, probably a dozen times. Aww. Do people <laughs> do people uh, request that a lot? Do you get tired of playing it? Because you're no, so good at I it. I just I'm, started playing it. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. Someone just requested that, I guess, a couple weeks ago, uh-huh. few weeks ago, and it was random, and I just played it on the spot because I was able to look up the chords to okay. the song, so I just sang you it. You sing it so beautifully. That Thank you. I, you're, okay, so I think every musician has like a song that they're kind of known for playing mm-hmm. if you keep singing that got that's gonna be yours it's because you I, sing it so good it's <laughs> thank you i started crying whenever i was singing it at home did you? by myself because i was just thinking what do you think about puppies no <laughs> i'm gonna cry <laughs> what what was the uh what was the emotion i was just thinking about how beautiful the song was it is beautiful she's talking about how you're always held by angels and um, that sometimes life gets too hard. Yeah. But you're always loved and comforted and you're going to make me cry. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> it is a beautiful song and do you want let me go get you. Okay. Real quick. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
But yeah, because of how beautiful the song is, that's what made me sad. Yeah. Well, it makes sense that you also have a happy. strong emotional connection to it because, I mean, you, you nail it. Thank it you. sounds great when you sing it. You okay? Oh, yeah. No, I'm used to this. Okay. I always do. I just let my emotions out instead of stifling them and holding them down. Probably pretty healthy. Yeah. yeah. I do my best to stay healthy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I found it in Las Vegas. I think, I want to say it's like an hour drive to Boulder City, and I think that's okay. where I was. Okay. If it wasn't Boulder City, it was pretty close to it. And then you've got the Colorado River kind of right there on the border. I think I'm telling people right, but yeah, Las Vegas is pretty close to the Arizona border. Come on, phone. Vegas, and then... Border just kind of over this way here. Right there. That dotted yeah, line. you can go that way or you can just head out the other direction. So there's there's nice. a few options there. And it might not have been Boulder City uh, that we went to, but wherever we were, where it was really cool because the river, it had to be right there in Boulder. Um, anyway, they had jet ski rentals. And so you can do casino stuff over here on this side, but if you go on that side, you can't, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but jet ski rentals in the middle so we took these jet skis and we go hauling ass down the river and the water level was you know at a certain point where okay i can get around this i can get around that no problem we kept going well the like tide went out or something like the mm-hmm. water level changed and we almost had to walk those uh, jet skis all oh the way back oh my goodness <laughs> wow because I'm, I'm running down the river going back and all of a sudden there's like I'm hitting rocks. And How I'm long like, were What's you out happening? there? Maybe an hour. So not that long, but oh it's just goodness. like the time of day that we were doing this. <laughs> okay. And it just, the water level just dropped. So we had to get off of our jet skis and walk them back. And as we're going back, we saw other people like on the other side of the river that had like done the same thing, but they picked like the wrong route. Mm. And so they did get beached, like could not move their jet skis because oh, like, no. It was water, and now it's rock. Like, they're just sitting on top of rocks. <laughs> wow, it seems like they weigh a lot, too. Yeah, I mean, heavy enough that, you know, if it drops a foot, it makes a big difference. Mm-hmm. And the jet ski people don't care because you just signed a waiver before you mm-hmm. took it out, and they've got your credit card on file. So, yeah, yeah have fun, whatever. <laughs> if anything happens, you're going to make me money, so that's You're about fine. to buy me a new one. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Well, so your residency at uh, Hotel Revel, mm-hmm. is that every Saturday? Is that going to continue mm-hmm. for a while? Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. And what other as shows? As long as we're still you? having fun. Yeah. What other shows do you have coming up? Um, I don't have any other upcoming shows. Okay. Well, as soon as you do, you got to let us know. Yeah. I'll we'll, of course, you know. help uh, get the message out on social media and all that good mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, EPs, record releases, anything like that coming up? Yep. <laughs> so I'm working on two singles right now okay. and I'm sifting back and forth as to whether I want to release an entire EP or just release them as singles. Very cool. So we, sh- we shall see. Okay. But I'll, sta- I'll be tuned. on standby. Yeah. 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 If you want to release it here first, you can always do that too. Okay. <laughs> if you insist. <laughs> do you have a favorite studio around here? Um... I have a favorite studio in Atlanta, but I haven't mm, I haven't figured out a favorite studio in Fort Worth yet. No. We've got a couple that uh, Fort Worth Roots is friends of. Uh, Cloudland Studios with Joe Tacky, and then uh, Blackland, or is that right? Blackstone. Blackstone just opened up about mm-hmm. three months ago, and I did a recording with um, Sean Russell from Cutthroat Finches oh. and uh, our friend from... Um, Fort Worth Music Academy out there, so I uh, got to check that out. But it's a beautiful studio. Mm. So I'm I'm big on studios. I don't know why I geek out on that. But well, you sort of run this business <laughs> out of a studio, so it totally makes sense that you like studios. And I'm working on this thing. One day, it's, ne- it's never going. This place will never be as nice as like Blackstone. But one day, I think I'll put together something like that. I'd like a really, really nice studio. All the equipment. You'll have it. And, yeah. Oh, I will. Yeah. yeah. One day. 
and I'll, I'll come see it. <laughs> cool, cool. You and you'll record it. Recording there, yeah. I don't want to be the audio engineer guy. I don't want to be the guy that mixes stuff. Mm. I have no interest in that. There's a bit of pressure. We'll get Joe Tacky on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah he can do his job. <laughs> What's your favorite place? If you're not playing, where do you want to go see a, a music venue or a, a show? What's your favorite venue? I would say Tana Hills. Tana Hills is... Really? Uh, Out of all the of, local places, you like Tana Hills the best? Well, thus far. Yeah. I haven't seen them all. Just because I'm a musician doesn't mean <laughs> I've been up in all of them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I also like Tulips and... Hmm, yeah, I guess those are the only two that really come to mind. Yeah. I had a lot of fun whenever I went to Tana Hills. My friend Ben C. Jones was oh, performing oh, there Bensie. and... We had fun in the green room and had a very synchronistic night. And He's great. I love him. Uh, the band Yoko was performing and spinning their mm -hmm. sweet jams and we were dancing all night. And, and we got caught in the rain and ended up going up to the VIP section. Um, and that was, was Tim fun. Tim Love up there? And then, yeah, we were talking to him <laughs> a little bit. He called me an extremist. And oh. It was fun. And <laughs> maybe I am, <laughs> um, but yeah, we had a, we had a good time. He was actually very hospitable cool. and very, um, he wanted to make sure that we were having a good time. He's very That's kind. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, I hear a lot of people talking smack about him and then those same people, whenever they actually hang out with him, they're like, Oh, he was really cool. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, he's fine. Stop talking crap. I don't understand why people talk <laughs> crap at all it's, because it's like yeah. when you're calling somebody else all of these things, you, you're you actually calling yourself you're all of those things. You're exposing yourself, yeah. Well, it, it's, you know, it, it seems like human nature. Like people get a certain level of notoriety and mm -hmm. everybody just starts talking crap. I want to tear them down <laughs> because they're not living their passion and purpose. Yeah. It's really That's ugly. what it is, right? Yeah. yeah. Jealousy is not of love and light yeah. it's of something else yeah but <laughs> it's cool i'm glad you get to to have that experience that's really cool now you did some, did you do some work with bency yeah yeah oh uh, yeah i probably should plug in the song that i was referencing yeah earlier called be here now um i wrote that song be here now when i was living in atlanta okay and he's helping me produce it that's awesome and he's also on the track so Very you'll cool. hear him singing some vocals some harmonizing and um things like that so do you think you guys will do any live performances together again yeah. probably i i had him accompany me in a couple of my so far sound shows yeah. that i did recently and that was a really good time and then i also got to open for him at twilight lounge which okay. is another venue i really like it's a little bit smaller but i like that's the probably my favorite there. one right now it's twilight yeah it was it, i don't think there's ever a cover there it's got a good little stage great mm -hmm. sound good lighting i don't know I that's like all you it. really need and it's a you know like I think my pullback from places like Tana Hills is it doesn't have, for me, it just doesn't have the right vibe. But I go into a place like Twilight, you know, it's cozy, it's smaller, it's mm -hmm. a little more intimate. Depends on what you're looking for and what kind of show yeah, you're going to. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You don't want to see a an all-out crazy rock show at it, Twilight, probably. It would be way too loud. It would be too much. In a yeah. small room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they, I mean, they should have some so far sound shows there or something, mm -hmm. too. That'd be a good spot for that. Yeah. Bensie's recorded with me at least once, so I like Bensie a lot. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and he uh, he did the Amplify 817 Day thing that was just uh -huh. incredible. Did you get to go to that? No. It was so good. I can't wait for, well, shit, it's about time for another one. Yeah, in the summertime, Yeah, I, I believe. Can't. Well, May, what is it? What's 817? When did they do that? That would be uh, August. Right. Yeah. August seventeenth would be okay. eight one seven. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So that's when it was. Yeah. Ben and I met at Lola's and we were there for a Here Fort Worth mixer. Okay. And during that time I think I had just put up something on my Instagram about my ayahuasca experience that I had oh, in two thousand twenty one. I, I, I thought we were gonna get out of here, but now we have to hear this story <laughs> for sure. <laughs> So uh, that was in 2021 in the summertime. And then I had met Ben a couple months or three months later. And uh, during during that here Fort Worth mixer, and he just came up to me and he's like, 
you're my ayahuasca buddy and started talking about how he had done it and <sighs> he felt more connected to me because of that. And then we had a bunch of existential conversations and got to talk about energy and mm -hmm. dreams and visions and all sorts of beautiful things. Yeah. And so we just hit it off as friends and now we've been, you know, that's cool. talking more. And yeah. He's good people. He puts off, puts off the right together. vibe for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, can we talk about that um, thing, yeah. the ayahuasca we thing? Talk about because I have a, a lot of questions thing. about that. Okay, for no reason <laughs> in particular. Um, so where were you, and how did this happen? I was in another dimension. <laughs> how did you get there? <laughs> so I uh, I was in Anna, Texas. Okay, where's that? It's by Melissa, Texas, okay. and I believe it's about an hour away from here. Okay. And I was at a place called Two Birds Church, which is not actually a church. They just you know, call it a, a church for legal reasons, hmm. loopholes, et cetera. Well, if you call it a church, so it's a church. Could, well, so you could administer uh, plant medicine oh, okay. in the way that they did okay. because otherwise it's illegal. Okay. And um, they... You can do it in South America legally with a shaman, um, but in that time, I had just been through a lot of things in my life, and I felt a bit disconnected from myself. I, had, you know, moved back to Fort Worth, and so this is twenty nineteen, twenty 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 one, twenty twenty one. Yeah, I feel like I have bouts of growth often yeah as far as evolving and sifting through things but so this was 2021 and uh my friend said that she wanted to try it and i had felt called to visit mama ayahuasca is what they call her okay. back in 2019 and I got to learn a lot about it then through documentaries and other things in my own research. And so uh, the goal of taking it is to diminish anything that doesn't really belong to you, like any kind of egoic attachment. Some right. people do it because they have uh, addictions or depression or things, things like that. And I did it because I was wanting more healing and wanted to see how it felt and get further connected to myself. I felt like I had a creative block as yeah. well during that time. So how many stars? How many uh, stars would you give it as far as uh, recommend or not recommend? Five stars. Five stars? Yeah. All the way? Although it's subjective, yes. But I would give it five stars. <laughs> but I would want, who you know, whomever wants to try it to make sure it's something that they want for themselves yeah and it's not something that they just feel pressured to do just yeah. because somebody else yeah. said it was good for them yeah but i like the way you said uh plant-based medicine because that's that's the right move i mean this is not a party thing this is oh a no not at all introspective like learning experience for people that are willing yeah. to because it's actually kind of brutal right i mean it's a little oh, yeah. tough on the system it's not yeah. fun yeah i had to do a dieta for a month prior and a month post it's where you eat certain things and don't eat only, certain things yeah which i already eat a vegan diet full time yeah. and don't really drink alcohol or anything like that so it wasn't that challenging so no for meat me. right at all Right. Ever. That's correct. Wow. So I've had a vegan diet and I've abstained from alcohol since August 23rd, 2019. Damn. Which was the day after my birthday. Well, good for you um, to stick to it anything that long. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank it takes you. Takes a lot of, you know, because I've gone through diets and things and tried to abstain from alcohol, but whenever it's all around you all the time, it's easy to just go, meh, I'll pick up my diet tomorrow. Totally. You know, yeah. cause it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And that's another, that brings us back to surrounding yourself with the right people sure. and the right things that you want, yeah. et cetera. But for me, I don't even get influenced by that. Anymore. Yeah. Like I just, 
I just feel like, oh, they're having a good time. Yeah. They're doing what they feel like they need to do right now, and that's cool. And I don't even think to myself, oh, let me take a swig of this or Mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. I just don't. I know my mental focus is always a lot better whenever I abstain from alcohol. And so, like, yesterday, Psychedelic Panther, Mm -hmm. I did pretty good up until about 7 or 8 o'clock. And I had probably four beers total. And I just felt like garbage this morning. And it wasn't even that much. It doesn't take much Mm -hmm. just to kind of like slow down your mental process. And of course, I only got six hours of sleep. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) that probably didn't help either. Yeah, it's like a a compound situation. (laughs) But when you're eating right and you're not drinking alcohol, you're you're just sharper, right? Mm -hmm. Do you feel more creative whenever you're doing that? Yeah, I felt like I was able to heighten my spidey senses, (laughs) what you could call them. Uh, after I went vegan mm-hmm. and because just like we were talking about earlier, how everything is energy, everything that you ingest becomes you. So yeah. for instance, if you decide to eat some steak, you know, what was that cow's entire life like and what kind of angst or fear or sadness was it that they had going through their system and what are you ingesting right now? That's mm-hmm. another reason why I like to bless my food before I eat it because also in preparation of the food that you ingest and if you're preparing it and you're having negative thoughts or you're feeling sad that's going to go into the food yeah so I like to transmute that with you know love and light and abundance and bless it and change the energy of the food that I eat so do you think you'll abstain from meat for the rest of your life well, that's how I feel right now. I'm okay. I'm a staunch animal advocate, so yeah. I don't want to, you know, kill any animal just because I decided that I was hungry. Mm-hmm. If I know of other opportunities and other foods that I can eat that can give me those same vitamins and minerals, I don't really understand the purpose of eating meat, yeah. although I understand why other people feel that way, and I just think that, to each his own and sure whatever you feel like doing is best for you is best right. for you so but i mean on your side of it you feel like you're getting everything that your body needs uh, nutrition wise and you don't have any energy issues that's the first thing i worry about whenever somebody starts talking about not eating meat it's like are you getting enough to fuel you but you don't feel like you're lacking in any dietary category no that's awesome that's very cool so what do you do to to support your protein intake? Oh, I eat a lot of beans and yeah. quinoa. Okay. And also there is a lot of protein in greens. People mm-hmm. don't talk about that. But in spinach, there's right. probably eight, eight grams of protein per serving. Damn, I didn't so, know that. And okay. kale and uh, Swiss chard and rainbow chard and... Um, Oh, I also really like nutritional yeast, hmm. which... What is that? Oh, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's... um, It comes from... I don't remember what the source of it is, but it's this yeast that is dehydrated, mm. right? And it's this orange color, and it kind of tastes cheesy-like. Okay. Oh, and you okay. can put it on your food, and it's super high in B6 and B12 and iron. And so is it like a cheese substitute that you can use for things? You could, yeah. but I wouldn't say it has the same consistency of cheese because it's more flaky. Yeah. But it definitely adds a lot of flavor to your food. That's the thing it's with really good some of the, um, like the Impossible Burger. I've had mm-hmm. that. Not a big fan. But they, uh, I guess they're finding ways to like, grow meat in labs and they're saying eventually that's going to be like on every shelf in every market stresses me out why because it's inorganic it stresses me out too i just wanted to see what what, you're yeah it's like (laughs) (laughs) where did it come from how did you do that yeah science Ah, i don't know there are actually a lot of fruits and vegetables that aren't real that are out out here right yeah in the streets and you'd never know right (laughs) right because it's not like all over the packaging right and why would they tell you that a lot of the genetically modified foods are the foods that make us feel tired and mm-hmm. less energized because you're yeah. just eating this food that has fiber in it, but it doesn't quite have the nutritional value that you need and it's yeah. not even real. So whenever you 
take something and genetically modify it, you're not actually ingesting the source of what you should be ingesting. Right. It's, it's just fake. Not the it's same. like fake food. Like, why are you even eating it? It's right. going to make you feel terrible. Yeah. I found over a, time. Uh, it's, I think it's called a stone's throw and it's a farmer's market. It's like open every day of the week. Mm-hmm. And they, they go out to uh, the trailhead uh, market. I think it's open every Saturday. Mm-hmm. I cannot think of where it's, it's uh Trinity River District or something like that. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, they're located off of 377, kind of going out towards, what is that? South? Yeah, south of here. I can't think of the name of the, is it Glen Rose? Is that on 377? I don't know. Anyway, going out that direction, just south of Fort Worth, uh, they're kind of on the... Benbrook and Crowley over in that vicinity. Yeah, but something like that. Didn't mean to throw you off. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, um, so I went in there. I, I was looking for a place where you could get like natural, like locally produced stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's a little bit of a drive for me. But all that to say, I got a dozen eggs and I went home and I cooked them. And I'm cracking these things open. And you know how like a store-bought cracked egg, it'll just drop out of the, uh, out of the shell into mm-hmm. the bowl. This thing, whenever you cracked it, it was like stuck to the shell almost. Like it just kind of took its time coming out of the shell and the color was completely different. Store-bought eggs are like a light yellow. This was like a, like a dark orange. Uh huh. And I'm like, man, this is, this is totally different. It's not, it's a, I, I mean, a chicken's a chicken, right? But mm-hmm. no, there's something else in that egg. And uh, so I, I think that, yeah, we should probably be eating stuff at least locally instead of places like walmart and stuff like that but it's such a pain in the ass and it's wild you watch these documentaries that talk about the uh, effects of all this processed food that we're eating and the microplastics and everything that's in our shit at every store and then um you see how easy it is to get that stuff because it's all around us right but then you go to one of those places way out of the way and you get the food and um, there's just no mainstream way to, to do that, I guess. I well, don't know. It's it just sh- depends on how long you want to live here. Yeah. <laughs> really? Like what kind of investments do you want to make? What do you want to invest with your time? Mm-hmm. You want to invest in your health and your livelihood and your mental functions and your emotions and your body, all of those mm-hmm. things. You want to take the time that's needed to make sure that you're getting the proper foods to support what it is that you're doing here or do you want to just get the quick fix and eat fake food and feel satisfied in that instant gratification just in that moment got to put some not really looking into the future much right yeah so it's like how do you want to spend your time and do you want to dedicate some time to that or not yeah where do you do all your shopping at i like shopping at sprouts Mm -hmm. or also central market um I also like some the sunflower shop. Mm-hmm. And Is it on Camp Bowie? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's by that red carpet mm-hmm. car wash place. Yeah. So I like those places. Um, however, I noticed when I was living in Atlanta, there were way more farmer's markets really? available. Yeah. So I would just go get my kale and beans and all sorts of things from there. And I loved it. And it was always within walking distance. Yeah. And for some reason, I haven't noticed as many over here. Well, maybe it'll pick up in popularity. That'd be nice. I would like that. Me too. I think Um, that we should definitely. We should start a farmers market. More (laughs) self-sufficient things. Yeah, (laughs) start a farmers market here locally. That'd be great. Maybe every Sunday or something. So that's the thing. Like on the weekends, you can usually find one. Mm -hmm. I think there's a few places I know of that do it like Saturday, Sunday kind of. Well, maybe someone can make one on a Wednesday. That'd be good. Yeah, get us through the week. (laughs) Yeah, so you don't have to go good. disgusting yeah, yeah. i don't even want to say that <laughs> discard that yeah we're gonna edit that out yeah i'll, ble- I'll bleep it out okay That's what I'll do. <laughs> <Yeah. Beep. laughs> perfect all right so what else you got going on today um siren saturdays that's right we talked about this and, and what time does that start it starts at seven it's okay. seven to ten every saturday and that's it's right. now an open mic so i'm no longer just performing the whole time oh cool as of right now are you leading the open yeah i'm leading it so i'm hosting the open mic and i'm going to be singing accompanied with william doug 
William Douglas on guitar today. I don't think I've met him yet. Okay, you probably haven't. Yeah. Um, but they call him the guitar doctor. He's the got his doctor. doctorate in Spanish guitar. Okay. So he's he's been on that for really cool. a long time, that journey. So it's going to be our first time performing together. So we'll see how it goes. Cool. We're just going to jump in. Well, if uh, whenever you put uh, your post up for, because I know you're, you're really good about doing the social media thing. If you don't see me post your stuff, just send it to me or tag me and I'll, I'll post it. Okay. Help, help remind people. Thank you. Hell yeah. Um, on Instagram, it's just Cassandra May. L- Cassandra. Sh- excuse me. <laughs> I was I was coaching myself before you got here. I was like, <laughs> don't you dare call her Cassandra. Cassandra May Laurence on mm-hmm. uh, Instagram. Is there anywhere else they can find your content? Yes. YouTube. YouTube. That's right. YouTube, I was there today. YouTube and then Facebook. And it's also just your name. Easy, yep. Easy Everything's pretty streamlined in that way. Yeah. Just my full name. Yep. Cassandra. Um, Cassandra. And then I, I've flirted with TikTok a little bit, but I don't know what's going to happen with that. It's kind of strange for me. I was, yeah, I was dumping hours into TikTok. And then mm-hmm. as soon as all the bullshit started, I'm like, all right. The suggestions well. and all of the videos that they constantly try well, to put into your the, the U.S. government is talking about banning TikTok altogether. Oh, gotcha. So that's. Whatever. Yeah, I don't, I try not to spend time viewing TikTok mm-hmm. because it, you will. You'll just lose Feel your less soul. intelligent. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that instantly. So, <laughs> like, I mean, this? I've I've already seen everything that it could offer me as far as like science and physics and things like that. I've already seen all those Neil deGrasse Tyson <laughs> videos, and mm-hmm. so I'm good. I don't need any more TikTok until they come up with some new technology, and then I'll have another three minute video that I need to watch. But yeah, mm-hmm. don't watch TikTok unless <laughs> unless it's somebody local. Then you should watch it. Unless you want your soul sucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else for our listeners before we get out of here? Um, stay tuned for my other song called 133. That's right. Your numbers. 133, which is also a seven like this year. Yeah. Perfect. Seven. So, yeah. Um, what else? I hope that you guys are doing great and feeling well and feeling loved on your journey. That's perfect. And we'll end it on that. Thank you for doing this. Can we do it again? Absolutely. All right. Thank you all for listening. We'll see you next week. A huge thank you to our new friend, Cassandra May Laurence. You guys need to check her out. I believe she's doing these uh, open mic nights every Saturday at Hotel Revel. I'll need to check up on that, make sure that's accurate. But you can find her on Instagram for all the updates on shows she's got coming up. On Instagram, as her name, Cassandra May Laurence. Cassandra, thank you very much for doing this with us. We look forward to having you back on the show sometime in the near future. Let's talk about these sponsors real quick. Woodpostmetalworks.com. You can go there and use offer code PODCAST817. They specialize in metal signs with or without LED backlighting. Fence and gate repair or installation, light steel fabrication, industrial plasma cutting, and more. Again, that is woodpostmetalworks.com. Hulk Walker Originals. You can go to halkwalker.com. They offer a huge variety of unique and personalized gifts. Also, laser engraving to customize just about anything you can think of. Roofing Solutions by Darren Hauk. We shouted him out at the beginning of the episode. You can get 50% off a roofing tune-up just by mentioning the Fort Worth Roots podcast. Get them on the phone at 817-882-6520. You can also get more information about them at roofingsolutionshauk.com. All this information will be in the show notes, of course. Uh, Pouring Glory, our friends over there, Scott and his team, serving up delicious award-winning burgers and a huge wall of beers on tap. It's a real chill vibe. They do a Sunday dog park thing, uh, dogs off the leash, running around on their back patio. That's uh, that's a really fun day. This last sun yesterday it was raining, so there weren't a whole lot of doggos out there. But uh, you can still bring your dogs on Sundays and have a good old dog park Sunday time. That is uh, pouring glory, and they're located off of just off of Main Street, just one block west of Main Street, uh, kind of in that near South Side area. Easy to find. Just type it into your Google search them a Bob. Uh, same thing with McFly's, another one of our sponsors. 
the best way to find them is just Google it. Uh, the address is weird, but the Google will find it. McFly's is a 1980s themed bar. Uh, very heavy Back to the Future vibes. And uh, you got to check it out. I love their fire pit. I was sitting next to a guy uh, this weekend, and he was telling me that it's the biggest fire pit in Fort Worth. I don't know that that's true. I didn't fact check it, but it is my favorite spot. Really cool little uh, fire pit. And they've got cornhole uh, boards out there made out of solid steel, so they're uh, they're not going to break down in the weather and the elements. They're pretty cool. Uh, lots of picnic tables outside. and They have live music very frequently. And they have a, a open mic night as well. You can go to McFly's on Instagram or Facebook to get more up-to-date information on those folks. Um, what else? Body Machine Fitness. I love this gym. I'm trying to make sure that I get in there and uh, put the work in at least twice a week. Um, but it's uh, it's not like any gym you've ever been to. This thing is set up like a like a nightclub. They've got one hell of a presentation for these forty five minute classes. It's a it's a group led class, uh, and uh, you got to check it out. Your first uh, class has already been paid for. You can go to bodymachinefitness.com to sign up for your first class. Who am I forgetting? Is that everybody? Roofing Solutions. Hawk Walker Originals, Wood Post Metal Works, Pouring Glory, McFly's, and Body Machine Fitness. That covers it. That's all the sponsors. If you'd like to sponsor the show, just hit me up, media at fortworthroots.com. Shout out to one of our listeners that uh, text me today, Karen, uh, one of our listeners, saw on social media that we, uh, we lost our 10x10 10 10 pavilion uh, Saturday. The wind caught it destroyed it and uh she hit me up and said hey can uh can we help you can we pitch in on uh a new one can we help you fund the next uh fort worth roots podcast mobile studio pavilion and i said yeah <laughs> so thank you karen and uh that's that's a really cool moment you got uh listeners of the show messaging you hey can uh can we help you that's that's a good feeling so Thank you, thank you. All right, I wanted to give you the full breakdown of what happened this weekend. So um, if you've been following the show, you know what we had planned. Uh, 420 on Thursday at Pouring Glory. That was a good event. And then uh, Saturday we had the River Oak Spring Fest Car Show. And then right after that we had uh, Claudia Wells signing autographs over at McFly's. There was a crawfish broil. Broil? Am I saying that right? Uh, and then outdoor movie night. I did not stay for the entire outdoor movie night. I got started around 9 o'clock-ish, and uh, I ended up going over to uh, Tales from the Fort, and uh, I I don't know if I want to encourage you to listen to that episode. We had been imbibing, and um, it really went off the rails. So uh, you can check that out, Tales from the Fort, and they are on Spotify. So start off, Pouring Glory, great event on Thursday for 420. We had, uh, I think, eight vendors and uh, a lot of people showed up. It was a great turnout. And we got a little spurt of rain right around 4 o'clock. And then it disappeared. No big deal. Covered up the roadcaster with a, a packing blanket that I carry with me just so I can have something to throw over it. And so that little bit of weather blew through. And then somewhere around, I think, 7 o'clock, totally unexpected. We thought rain chances were not going to be an issue. And then right around 7 o'clock, it started dumping on us. So everybody just started, you know, uh, fiercely packing up their gear to uh, get it out of the elements. And, um, yeah, it, so we got rained out there at the end. Not a big deal. Everybody was in a pretty good mood about the whole thing. People were hiding out under pavilions, and uh, the party continued. Itchy Richie uh, was the next band up on stage, and he ended up doing an acoustic set inside uh so it all worked out but yeah a little bit of rain the inside was packed there was not an empty chair and uh i just want to say thank you all for coming out to that and then saturday was great we got the mobile podcast studio uh van out for the first time in months <laughs> but the reason we pulled it out is because it's 
right down the street from the studio to the uh, Camp Carter grounds. So it wasn't a far trip. I figured she could do it. She made it and um, just kind of used her as a big old billboard. I only had, I think, two people asked to see the inside of it, which I thought was kind of kind of weird. But I also, I was so busy yesterday or Saturday uh, with the recordings. We did like eight, maybe nine recordings with uh, different people that were out there supporting the uh, River Oak Spring Fest car show that I didn't get to do a lot of stuff like that. I wanted to grab people up and be like, come on, check out the inside of the mobile podcast studio. There's nothing in there. It's just a big old empty box. But uh, in the future, that's going to be a studio. So anyway, working on that. And if your business would like to sponsor the uh, funding portion of that, (laughs) we would very much accept uh, monies to put that thing together. Um, But yeah, good event. I I don't know who was doing count. I don't know if we had somebody out there counting the number of people that showed up, but it looked like we had uh, a thousand cars out there. I'm exaggerating, but it was a lot. It was a lot of cars, and uh, I think everybody had a great time. There was stuff that went on out there that I didn't even know was going to happen. Like we had, uh, I think it was Castleberry ISD um, kiddos performing out there. Uh, in the stage area, I believe it was a whole mariachi group. That was really cool. I got a couple of short videos of that, so we'll look for that on the old social medias. Um, but yeah, great weather. And then right there at the end, around four o'clock, a gust of wind came through and just decimated our little ten by ten pavilion. I looked around and everybody else seemed to be good. Um, I think probably what. Uh, affected our little pavilion uh, instead of everybody else's because I had the thing staked down, uh, tied up to some heavy stuff. Uh, didn't think there was any chance of this thing getting away from me. But I also had put a like eight by six by eight uh, tarp uh, stretched from the mobile podcast studio to the pavilion uh, to provide people with shade. We we brought a big old picnic table so people would have somewhere to sit down uh, and enjoy some shade and. Anyway, I think that might have been what uh, gave it the extra lift. So, anyway, it destroyed it. But And and that day, that that morning, whenever I was unpacking the the pavilion, I was thinking to myself, like, man, this thing is great. I hope this thing lasts a while. (laughs) Because I don't want to go through the the pain of trying to find the exact uh, pavilion again because it's such an incredible setup. The system is uh, really easy to to lock into place and get set up in a hurry. So I'm going to try to find that same pavilion, I think. Anyway, um, a lot of you came out to support uh, the show, and I really genuinely appreciate that. Thank you for being there. And um, there were two recordings that we did. It was the two earliest recordings we did. One was with a group called Flurry Fitness, and the other one was with uh, Friends of River Oaks Animal Shelter. Those two recordings got deleted. Um, there was some kind of issue with the SD card, and it just dropped the files. So uh, I'm going to have to contact them and get them back on the show at some point. But anyway, thank you to everybody that sat down and did a recording with me. Thank you to everybody that came by and said hi. Took some pictures with some folks. It was a good day. And then McFly's right after that. So I broke down in a hurry because my 10 by 10 had flipped. I started ripping everything apart and packing it up in the truck. And uh, then we got out of there, uh, parked the uh, truck back at the studio, and then ran on down to McFly's. Uh, Claudia Wells, uh, Marty McFly's girlfriend from Back to the Future, is how you will best know her, was there signing autographs. And uh, the crawfish that they brought in, it was uh, uh, Casey's father, I believe, uh, that was doing this whole thing. But they had brought, uh, excuse me, crawfish, from Louisiana that morning, uh, fresh. They, they were alive whenever they met their demise inside the big old boiling pot of water. Um, but the best crawfish I think I've ever had, they were huge. People were, uh, Garrett, the owner of uh, Boulevard Brew, which is located there on River Oaks Boulevard. If you ever need a coffee, that's the place to go. Um, Anyway, he was there with me, and he was cracking the claws open and getting the meat out of the claws, which I've never seen somebody do with a crawfish, but they were that big. They were like tiny lobsters. Um, 
It was excellent. They served it up with uh, sausage and potatoes and mushrooms, and it was just excellent. Um, and then Claudia Wells showed up. There was a huge line of people uh, that showed up for this, and some guy showed up in a Kia, one of those, I think it's the Kia Soul, um, and he had this thing decked out like uh, like it was a DeLorean from Back to the Future, had like the energy processor thing that you see on uh, the DeLorean. He had that strapped to the top of his car, and it had like, anyway, he just did the whole thing up. He had a uh, flux capacitor in his dash with uh, with all the little digital readouts and stuff. It's ridiculous. Um, and I actually ran into Claudia Wells' uh, family, his, his or her brother and, uh, I guess, uh, sister-in-law and their kiddo were there, just wildly interesting people. So got to hang out with them and talk a little bit and just uh, fun times. And then they started the movie night and I got out of there um, and went on over to the Jared's with Tales from the Fort. And I was the first one to get to record in his new studio setup. So I was pretty excited about that. And he said I was also the first three-time repeat guest. So lots of first times there. But uh, we had way too good of a time. And uh, I had a little bit to drink. And that episode is bonkers. Um, That was on Saturday. I ended up listening to it on Sunday on my way out to Pouring Glory. And about had to pull the car over. I was laughing so hard uh, that I wasn't confident I could continue driving a motor vehicle. But um, I think some of it. It's just out of embarrassment. I really let uh, really let my mouth go. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Anyway, shout out to the Jareds. I had a great time. Uh, if you listen to the episode, you, you will be able to tell almost immediately that I was having a wonderful time. So hope I get to go back on that show, and I haven't ruined my chances of ever being invited back on Tells from the Fort. Great guys. Fun episode. Go check it out. They're on Spotify. And that's it. That's the whole weekend. That's everything we did. That's how the events went. I really do appreciate all of you for coming out. Uh, We had so many people show up and just, hey, we're here. So, and I'm really bad about taking pictures because I should should have about 100 pictures with people that uh, showed up for these events that I just, I get busy. I forget. So, next time you see me at one of these events, remind me to take a picture with you. That's always fun. Because I'll forget. I always forget. Okay. Cassandra May Lawrence. Make sure you go check her out on Instagram. She's just a really awesome soul. You just If you ever get a chance to meet her, you'll know what I'm talking about. But just a very sincere, very nice person and an extremely talented musician. So on Instagram, Cassandra May Lawrence. And it will be in the show notes, of course. And oh, what do we got coming up? I've got event coverage episodes where I did a bunch of interviews. Uh, we got several of these. I've got one from Psychedelic Panther that's going to be coming out. Uh, I've got a few from Pouring Glory. We didn't do a ton of recordings that day, especially after the rain started. I was actually in the middle of a recording uh, with Richard Keller from Itchy Richie and the Burning Sensations whenever that rain came in. And we actually we had Slim Pickens on speakerphone and he was telling us, he's like, yeah, I don't know uh, if you guys are going to be good. We're getting a lot of rain over here. He was like seven minutes down the street. And r- right when he's saying that, like, it just started dumping on us. So uh, in the middle of the recording, I'm trying to s- scurry around and get everything packed up. But good times. Love it. So anyway, uh, that's an episode that's going to be coming out. And then we've got recordings from uh, the River Oak Spring Fest Car Show. So Psychedelic Panther, Pouring Glory's uh, 420 event, and then uh, River Oak Spring Fest car show. We had talked about maybe setting up the Roadcaster at the uh, at Mc- McFly's for uh, the Claudia Wells thing, but uh, Casey had said he didn't think that would really work or be necessary. So, And uh, after being at the event, I 100% agreed with him. It was just there were so many people there, and it was so loud. Uh, there would not have been a good place to set up. So any who that's it man that's all of it mm-hmm. 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 so um yeah that's something to look forward to and then we've got the fort worth fire department uh we've done a recording with them uh i gave him permission to take the file and review it before i release it 
and we're just waiting to hear back from Craig. So as soon as the public information officer gets back to me, we'll have that one ready to go. Yeah. So event coverage and the fire department. And then, let's see, what is it? Friday, Saturday. Saturday, I sit down with uh, Tim from the Funky Panther. He's going to be here to uh, air out some conspiracy theories, tell us all about himself, and uh, that should be fun. So that's what's in the pipe right now. If you've got any questions, statements, if you just want to holler at me, you can always get me at media at fortworthroots.com. And I got that phone number. Oh, hold on. That's something we need to check. Do we have any voicemails? Excuse me. Let's see here. Stay with me. Hold on. I'm looking at two things. I want to give you the Fort Worth Roots phone number so that you have that. And it, of course, is in the show notes. But I really need to memorize this damn thing. It's 817 988 one two nine two and i'm just checking to make sure we don't have any voicemails no we do not okay that's no problem but next week you're gonna call me right you're gonna call me when you hear this episode at eight one seven nine eight eight one two nine two and you're gonna tell me some stuff and i'm gonna play it on next week's episode that's what we're gonna do right oh I almost completely forgot. Bay Point Designs was one of the vendors out there at the River Oak Spring Fest car show, and they did a drawing uh, for a cooler with all sorts of uh, Rangers, Texas Rangers baseball gear, cups and hats and stuff, and a pretty decent little cooler. Uh, Anyway, so the drawing uh, only had, unfortunately, two names in it, so I just randomly selected one. I reached in the box and pulled one out. And the winner for the cooler from the River Oak Spring Fest car show is Mr. Freddie Garcia. I guess I'll give you a call, Freddie, and uh, let you know that you won. Uh, you got the cooler. We'll have it here at the studio, so uh, we'll arrange a time for you to come on by and pick it up. All right, that is enough out of me. Uh, as always, follow us on social media because there's always something going on, either with Fort Worth Roots Podcast or with one of our uh, wonderful sponsors, putting on events, live music, uh, giving away uh, deals and discounts and just all sorts of stuff. So uh, on f- uh, excuse me, Facebook, Instagram, uh, and TikTok, it is Fort Worth Roots. And if you ever want to see videos of what we got going on in the studio, uh, we are on YouTube also as Fort Worth Roots. That is absolutely enough talking out of me. Thank you again for being here, and I will see you next week. Peace. Peace.